How's it going, gang? It's a final render here, and welcome back to Fallout 76 Permadeath. This is part 10 this video, and we've got a really exciting video for you guys today. We are finally in the double digits, and I'm really looking forward to playing this game with you guys today. I actually haven't recorded Permadeath in a long time, because I've had so much kind of backed up and recorded, ready to go, but from now on, I'm going to be recording these videos the week they are meant to go out, so therefore any news updates and stuff for the game, any kind of patches to the game, will all be much more updated for when the actual video goes out. And look at that view, by the way, right there. Look at that. There's definitely an enormous bit of rain going over the Cranberry Bog right now. That's absolutely awful. I wouldn't want to be there. But hey, what are we going to get up to today then, people? Well, there's a few things we can do today that I think would be really cool. So, firstly... We could go and do some of the stuff for Rose, because some of the early quests for Rose are actually not that dangerous and actually do give us a good amount of XP. But then again, we've also had some people suggesting maybe take on the Mistress of Mystery quest line, because that is just a very cool quest line, and it's also fairly easy. So, I'm not too certain what I want to do first. I mean, we do already have some of the stuff for Rose already done, so why don't we maybe do this one quest for Rose, and then we can go from there. So our first objective for Rose is to go and get some items which we can get over at this crash plane and also over here at this train station. Now if I remember over here, there is a sentry bot over there. So that's good fun. Why don't we go and get that one sorted before it causes too much trouble and then we can do this plain one over here which I believe is super mutant. So not that bad overall, but it's definitely the one with the uh, sentry bot down here which could be troublesome. But let's give it a go and see what happens. Some good news about this series as well is that we are now fully caught up with all the stuff I recorded in bulk quite a few weeks ago. So that essentially means now that every time you see content from this series, it has been recorded the week it goes out. Initially, I recorded maybe eight episodes or so within about two weeks, three weeks or so. That way I knew that I actually had a decent series before I uploaded the first episode. However, now I'm going to be uploading these videos when they are actually recorded. That means any updates to the game are fresh for when the video goes out. It means that any patches applied will be in the videos at a similar time to when you're seeing the video. Because we got to a stage to where sometimes the updates were actually out for weeks by the time the video had actually come out. And I said, hey, there's this new update and it's not new anymore. So therefore, now we're going to be recording much more closer to the time of actually uploading, which is good for the game, but I definitely wanted to record a large amount of content before uploading the first episode, if, you, if that makes sense, you know. But, it's all good now. There you are, oh boy, I did not expect that. Let's go take out some of these cultists before anything bad happens to us. I honestly was not paying attention there. I was actually looking at my phone, if you must know. And then these cultists came up. Well, I came up to them, really, didn't I? Okay, so let's take these guys out quickly before they cause too much trouble. I mean, these guys actually aren't that tough. They've only got kind of pipe weaponry for the most part. Yep, not a problem, but they really did take me off guard there. <laughs> okay, we also really need to replace this shotgun, don't we? This shotgun, it's a two-shot shotgun. So, that's very nice. So, it means we get an extra quarter of damage, because it isn't actually two-shot. It's technically one and a quarter shot of extra damage. But this is only a level 5 shotgun, so it's genuinely not very powerful, despite having the two-shot effect. Yeah, it's doing 69 points of damage. We'll have to get a new shotgun some point soon, check out what kind of damage it is, and see if it's useful. But we do have our target over there. So we've got to be super careful here, people. I really mean that, because this area could be the end of the run right here. It really could. We have got a sentry bot over here. Along with a bunch of other robots. And you know what I'm like with robots. I hate the robots. If anything's going to kill me in this run, besides idiocy, it is going to be the robots. So let's be super duper careful here. Or super duper careful, I don't know. Right, so we just need to get it inside that truck over there. That orange train car, I believe. But where's the sentry bot? Is he here even? There he is. Level 19 sentry bot. He's got an eyebot with him as well. And typically... There's also a couple gutsies and handies around as well, so let's be careful here. I mean, there's probably not much point in being stealthy, right? Because I won't be able to kill them in one shot stealthily. So let's just go with the anti-armor gun. We should do a bit more damage. All right, I've also got... Do I have any grenades hot barred as well? I've got throwing knives hot barred. Uh, let's go with frag grenades. I actually might want to use a couple of these if it gets hairy. So okay then. Creep up to the old rock here. Give it a look-see look. 
There's a gutsy over there, an iBot there, and also a gutsy there. Okay. Where's that iBot gone? The iBot's... He's over there. He's flown away. All right. So let's be super careful here. Let's do the old creep walk as opposed to the creep run. Grab that right there. Okay. We got one of them. Fantastic. Let's just creep away around here so they can't see us immediately. Okay, we're good. Next one is over by the plane. Can we just quickly fast travel away? Oh, that 10 15 seconds are waiting. <laughs> On a serious note, though, I'm so happy they added this feature to where if you don't get hit for 15 seconds, you can just fast travel away. Such a great idea. I hope every Fallout game in the future has this. Right, we're good. Okay, we're over at the Overseer house. We're much safer now, and we just gotta kinda go over this ridge and then head over to the crash plane. Would you have a messenger event? Absolutely not. Messenger event is exceptionally boring. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've never really had that much fun doing messenger. But we're in the forest now, so we should be considerably safer. Also, how close are we to leveling up? Oh, we still got quite a bit of points to level up, unfortunately. Yeah, if we actually level up to level 20, we get some really big bonuses. Firstly, we can use the fixer that we got last video, which is probably going to be our main weapon for the longest time, that silenced fixer. And also, we unlock the first rank of sneak, which is absolutely game-changing. You know, as soon as we get max sneak and also get maximum blocker, we are going to have a much more higher chance of actually succeeding in this run with those two perks right there. We get blocker at level 21, I believe. So, the next five levels are going to be a big jump in power for us. We're going to be much, much safer in general. There we are. There's our objective right there. Crash plane over there. And super mutants have kind of made a little base out of it. They've taken all the parts and put them all along this radio tower to make a very dangerous fortress to assault. Right. This is going to be interesting. We need to climb quite high in order to get the piece, if I remember correctly. I can see at least one mutant. He's very far away. We probably won't be able to hit him from this distance, despite having the sniper rifle. Oh, hello. Who's that there? A raider scum. All right, let's see if we can get you right in the face. There we go. Dropped him. Excellent stuff. Reflexes like a, like a lynx right there. Look at me. So what have you got then? Have you got anything decent on you? He's got a double barrel shotgun. Hmm. This is doing 80 points of damage. Whereas my two-shot one, how much is that doing? Dun, 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 dun. Am I blind? I honestly can't see it for some reason. Okay, I'll, I'll just check it in the pit boy. It might be like a legendary thing because it's got a skin on it and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, okay, so the double barrel is doing 80 points of damage. 80 points of damage. Well, this is doing 69 points of damage. So that is obviously a much more powerful weapon. But that being said, it's only got two shots. Whereas this has got many shots with a hair trigger. I don't think I want to replace it with a double-barreled. If I could replace it with another pump-action shotgun, that would be better, I think. Alright, so let's get out of here then. I am wondering if I want to go directly there, or if I just want to go around. That's our objective, on the top of that cliff where that yellow square is. But obviously that's where the mutants are. If I go the long way around, I might be able to just drop in without actually bothering too many of them. Just drop in, grab the item, fast travel away. That might be a safer plan overall. Because whilst I know we can kill mutants, we can kill most of the things we are coming up against at this level. I don't really want to risk that because there are a lot of mutants. There really is. And yes, I know it's not like a you only live once, ru once run or something like that where we've got to be super careful about never getting hit. We can heal ourselves and stuff. But it's just more the mindset of it. I want to treat this as if I've got to be super, super careful. Because if I treat it like that, then everything should be safer in the long run. I've been thinking about this, and I was thinking, is it possible to do a You Only Live 1 run inside Fallout 76? And it might be. It genuinely might be. It would be very difficult, because you couldn't say... Uh, let's actually speed up a little bit here. Because you couldn't, for example, start the game with 10 Endurance, or 15 Endurance in the case of 76. You can't do that. Everyone starts at one skill point. Despite being, you know, the best and brightest in America. But let's ignore that bit. But also, you would need a true health counter, I think, for um, doing Fallout 76 with a You Only Live 1 rule set. And it's possible. I do think it is possible, but it would be very, very difficult. It might be the hardest kind of You Only Live 1 
run you could ever do doing 76 because you start off the weakest of any other Fallout game for the most part. At least the Bethesda ones anyway. Hello, mate. You only gave me a minor heart attack there. Hello, Mr. Prizebot. <laughs> what am I going to get? Please give me something useful. Don't just give me cash or something, you know. Give me an actual useful item. A silver locket. Well, okay. I mean, it's not worthless, that. You know, it's got gears. It's got materials in it. It's better than just giving me, like, a gas supply ticket or something. Which would be very cool in real life, you know, if you just got... I presume it gives you free gasoline, right? Free petrol? That would be a very cool prize in real life. But in the video game, eh, not so much. Okay, so we're pretty much at the top of the cliffs now. Will we be able to drop down onto that like I want? I certainly hope so. Yeah, alright, get a little higher. We're 60 feet away. Uh, we'll try to use the older stealth one here, the stealth one, because we're not um, going against robots now. We're going against mutants, and I can drop these with headshots if they're sneak attacks. Okay, let's get the slow creep going. I can't believe for so long I was creeping, but doing the running creep. You know, that doesn't really make much difference. You know, if you're not doing sneaking like this, and you don't have escaped artist, it's really not going to help you sneak it at all for the most part. You only your first shot will really be good. That is until you get an escape artist, that is. Okay. Yep, we seem to be good, so just go to the other side of that little rock over there, and we should hopefully see where our objective is. This is all stuff that Rose wants in order to fix her radio, by the way, because right now her radio is kind of scrambled. So if we can get this up and running for her, then we're golden. But also, a, a thing about fixing this up for Rose is that we'd have to do this for the Wastelander storyline anyway, so it's probably a good idea just to get it out of the way since we need to be level 25 to do the Wastelander stuff. Okay, it's actually in this plane. In the actual chassis of it itself. Is it a chassis? I don't know. I don't know planes. I should know. I freaking lived on an RAF base my entire life, didn't I? Right, let's go see if the... There are mutants here. Okay, very close by. You can hear them talking. There's two of them. Because they're having a conversation. That's how conversations work, don't they? Unless, you know, you've got voices in your head like me. Are they going to fight each other? Okay, they're not going to fight each other. But one's going to move away. Okay. That's great. He's moving away. We might have to kill one of them. We'll see what happens. I've still got my uh, grenades equipped. Let's uh, get the old throwing knives. Unfortunately, the throwing knives actually are patched out of the game currently. We talked about that in the last video. Okay, there's one right there. Do I take a shot at the head? Go on, then. Tits. Okay. Didn't kill him. Knife. Okay. We alerted the other one, but they don't know where we are. He doesn't know where we are. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we're hidden again. Brilliant, brilliant news. Okay, so we're able to get that kill. And we're able to do it silently. Oh, hello. How many are there? There's at least one there. And then there's one just kind of over there. Just beyond those, well, beyond those plants. Yeah, there he is. You can see him now. Okay, let's just go in and grab it then. We probably didn't need to kill that first one, in all fairness. We probably could have just waited for him to turn away. But just in case, you know. Yeah, it's a cool idea to turn a plane into an actual base, isn't it? Okay, our stealth is really working now. If we weren't creep walking, they probably would have heard us by heard us by now. Sorry. Uh, let's go and grab that. E excellent stuff. Right, we're over encumbered, but we have checkpointed our objective, so that's good. Let's go and have some uh, grilled rad stag. That will give us some carry weight back. And now we construct a signal repeater at any tinkerer bench. Okay, well, it's telling us to go over there because there is one over there. That's like a ski lodge. Let's not do that, though. Let's go over to our camp where it's safe. <laughs> it's safe in my camp. Not sending me to a ski lodge that's also full of super mutants. That would be dangerous, wouldn't it? Back to our lovely little camp, then. Let's jump in here and get rid of all of our junk. There we go. Fantastic stuff. We have that and we can repair our quest item here. 
I do like this little camp actually. It, it's very simple, but what I like about it is that we genuinely can just place it everywhere, which is really cool. Whereas a lot of the camps I would normally do is say a video here on the channel, you can't move those camps, you know, like the blueprint just doesn't work. There's too many glitches involved with the normal camps I do. But something like this, where it's all contained in one little prefab, I can move it pretty much every time. So that's fantastic. Right, so now that that's done, we can actually go over to here and activate the radio signal. Now, we have been here. We have been here before. So we shouldn't really have a problem with getting around. But I do seem to remember that there are some mutants over there and maybe also some protectrons which jump out and attack you once you install the signal repeater. So maybe we should see if we can actually repair some of our items. I mean, I don't really want to repair this gun because we're going to get the fixer very soon. So I might just repair the hunting rifle. I repair this and then we can just go and use the fixer when we level up, hopefully very soon. I mean, how much is it to repair this? It can't be that much, right? It's only a pipe gun. Ah, whatever. You know, whatever. Better safe than sorry, right? So let's go and get ready to take on the National Isolated Radio Array. Let's do it, people. This is it then, people. We came here very briefly at the last video. And we need to go and grab a part. I believe it is actually in that tower over there. The one further away. So let's be careful here. I mean, there are lots of mutants here, if I remember correctly. And... Oh, I hear a treasure miner. <laughs> I hear a mole miner. Treasure? Hello? Mole miner treasure hunter? Yeah, we actually do have a treasure hunter event on in the game currently. I'm not going to get him if it means going in this building. Oh, he's in the building. Yeah, I ain't going in there. That building has got literally dozens and dozens of super mutants in there. I'm talking maybe 20 super mutants. I ain't going in there even for a treasure hunter mole miner. Oh, well, that's a shame. That's a legendary item we could have got. Let's take a look over here then. So, I don't know if it's super mutants at this little radar array right here. But it's the next one along. Let's go check it out. I mean, most of them are in that building right over there that we just walked past. So, we're past wor the worst of the danger already. But there's normally one... Yeah, there's one in there at least. Let's go check it out and see if we can pop him in the head. Okay, we're in caution now. I think we're getting a little... Close to the dude. I mean, he's just suspicious, you know. He just he just heard a, a little bit of a rustle, you know. Nothing too crazy though. Our brackets are slowly getting bigger though, which means we're actually starting to get less notice. There we go. He's now gotten over the fact that he heard a rustle. A rustle of the bushes. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get him in the head with a sneak attack. Alright, that was a good hit. Well, there goes my last throwing knife. I'm not getting any more. Unless I find that one again, which I doubt. I do want to kill this guy as well, because we do have to deal with Protectrons soon. So the last thing I want is to deal with Protectrons and a mutant. There he is. Oh, darn it. Stay still, you sausage, please. Round right the back of the head. There we go. Oh, wow, he's still alive. Yeah, we definitely need to get that fixer up and running. This, like, level 10 pipe rifle or something is not cutting it anymore. Is it level 10? It might be a level 15 even. I don't know. Just isn't cutting it though anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, this is a level 10. Yeah, okay. So there we go. That's good. We have got that mutant dead. Now, as I said, I believe when we install this, two protectrons pop out. I don't remember where from, but I believe they do. So let's go over to my hunting rifle. Anti-armor hunting rifle. And then get away from there for a moment. I don't remember where they spawn. They either spawn, like, up here somewhere or down by where the main entrance is next to that building over there. It's probably that building over there, isn't it? Please don't make me look like an idiot and they don't spawn now. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy if they don't spawn. Don't get me wrong. I am happy about that. Yeah, they haven't spawned. Oh, wow. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. I look stupid. Hey, what's new, Render? Right. Let's go and activate this big old radar dish then. In we go, hit the control panel. Yep, and then we go into auxiliary component control. Adjust for signal strength. It's offline, contact the system administrator. Okay, so we just gotta like divert power first. There we go. This is an emergency alert. It's the end of the world and we're all fucked! <laughs> I love this thing. 
My friend, you just helped me tap into the emergency broadcast system for the whole region. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. But enough small talk. Full disclosure, I didn't think you'd succeed at getting my signal working. So I was just going to kill you and take your stuff when you came back? If you came back at all, that is. Guess it'd be a real dick move for me to do that now. Look, I'm what you people would call a raider. Killing, stealing, and cheating is kind of my shtick. And thanks to you, I've got a working radio. So I can reach other like-minded individuals and get them to join me. You've opened the floodgates. Hey, come see me at the top of the world when you get the chance. I've got something for ya. And I pinky swear I won't kill ya. Well... Isn't that lovely then? Rose sounds like absolutely dynamite gal. Let's head over to the top of the world and go get our prize. Hopefully we'll get something really good. Primarily XP, please. Hey, there she is. It's Rose. Bye. Hello, Rose. How are you doing? Uh, well, this is a little awkward. Not what either one of us expected, eh? Anyway, to prove I'm not a monster, I scrounged up some old junk to give you as a reward. There we go, we've got some caps for that, that's pretty good. We've got a photo frame, a radar one. So, you know, nice, but not really what I'm after. But what else do we get as an actual prize then? We've got some stim packs, some radaway, water. We got some, ooh, we got a death tambo. Okay, that's interesting. That might be a decent melee weapon to use, because we've currently got our machete, haven't we? Our serrated machete. That's doing 40 damage, this one. We've also got a plan. But what's our machete doing? Machete's doing 28. Okay, we might actually roll with the old Death Tambo for a bit then. Fun little weapon right here. You know, it won't have the bleed damage, but pretty nice weapon overall. And here's Madigan, of course. We came up here to find out what happened to Madigan. And he's right here. <laughs> You're here about that guy, huh? Well, good luck getting anything out of him. He's been dead a while. Madigan found something. A game changer. What is it? Who knows what goes through their dopey responder brains. Can you imagine going through life 100% chem free? <sighs> anyway, you're probably looking for that scorch detector uplink thingamajiggy was trying to install when they caught him. Seems real handy. I know where it is, but I'm not ready to talk. But maybe if you help me out, I'll trust you enough. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so she's not actually going to just give us the information we want. She's going to make us work for it, silly old Rose. Look at you, thinking you're really cool. Actually, she is pretty darn cool. I mean, what can I say? I love the idea of the character Rose. Now, there's been like some cybernetic transference of a raider into into a Mr. Handy. Very, very cool. Oh, hey, uh, I have something to say to you. Now, what was it? Uh, ah, right. So, wanna help me out again? Hmm. I'm game. How can I help you? Tell me about the raiders, the dead ones. Uh, why should I help you? You almost backstabbed me. Almost. I almost backstabbed you. But clearly I didn't or you'd be dead. Point is, you're alive and stronger for it because of me. Did I even get a thank you for that? No. I mean, it's literally true. You know, I literally am more strong because of doing that quest for her. So come on. So the old let's carry on. raiders each have their own, like, pet projects or whatever. You know, to be all special. If I'm ever going to rebuild a raider army, I need to figure out which of these crazy tactics actually work. We both win. I get answers and you get a new toolbox full of scary things you can use to terrify your enemies and gross out your friends. Okay then, uh, tell me about these tactics. But also, you know there's already a raider army around in Crater? Are you seriously calling Meg's bunch of losers an army? <laughs> Please. Those blood eagles, maybe, but they're not my type. Alright, so yeah, they've got a little bit of stuff, but sign me up for Rose's army. Can you say best day ever? <laughs> or at least this week, because uh, that chem trip last Thursday. Oh, man, whoa. Tell you what, you help me out and you can consider yourself a super secret member of my Raider gang. So, uh, shh. Okay, tell me about these tactics. 
We'll start with my personal favorite, karma. No, not that new age bullshit. I'm talking about a chem that hits hard but leaves you reeling. My cutthroat friends figured out a way to weaponize it. I'm gonna lend you my old syringer, and you're gonna modify it to shoot carbon darts! <laughs> Just bring it back, or I'll find you and kill ya! <laughs> Seriously. Not joking! I really will. Whoever does the voice performance for Rose really had a lot of fun with this character, didn't they? <laughs> I think Rose is honestly one of the most compelling characters in all Fallout 76. Not only that, but also she was one of the only kind of voiced characters that you could talk to in the original base game. Because obviously, not many of them actually have much to say. But Rose, obviously, you can have proper conversations with and stuff from the base game. So that's very cool. And they kind of retroactively updated her with the Wastelander kind of dialogue. Which is very, very cool when that came out. So... Uh, we need to do Flavors of Mayhem. Now, Flavors of Mayhem is a very interesting quest, because once again, it involves bears. And that's obviously a problem, but we're going to be okay. Let's go and make up this Karma Syringer, and then we can go take on some bears. That's fun. And so here's Rose's Syringer, then. Just a typical Syringer, you know, just fires like a blank dart. But she gave us the schematics and the ingredients for a Karma Syringe. Makes the target incredibly powerful for 30 seconds, but incredibly weak for 60 seconds when it wears off. Okay, so let's go and pop that on there. And then we've got to go test it. Oh, now that you've got if yourself some karma, patient. it's time to see it in action. There's a mean old Mama Yagwai I like to call... Actually, strike that. I lost track of her a while back, so just make it so there's one less Yaogwai to worry about. I don't care which one. If you can't find a Yaogwai, find something else that's tough so you can see the karma in action. I know, I know. It sounds crazy to make a beast like that tougher and nastier. But once karma wears off, it'll be as weak as a newborn kitten. That's when you finish it off. <laughs> Assuming you survived the initial effects. Have fun! What a fun scenario. Okay, so we need to actually hit a bear. So it's given us several locations where bears can spawn, Yagwai, including one which we've actually been to, Site Alpha. We know about this spot for bears. We dealt with one in the last video. So let's go over there, hit it with a Karma Dart, then we've got to survive for 30 seconds, and then we can kill it quite easily. Let's do it. Here we are at Alpha then. So let's grab the Syringer. There is almost certainly going to be a bear around here. I used to have a camp at this spot, and there was always, always a bear here. Guaranteed. So let's see if we can get up on the roof. We obviously don't have the marsupial mutation or anything. We did very briefly in the last video, actually. We actually caught marsupial. But I pretty much used right away the second we caught it. So no marsupial for me, unfortunately. Okay, so there's our bear. Now we need to survive for 30 seconds. In that 30 seconds, he will be exceptionally dangerous. But then after that, he'll be exceptionally weak for one minute. So let's hit him with that. Wait 30 seconds, and then kill him. <laughs> Stupid Yaogwai. Well, you didn't chicken out, and you didn't fuck up. So, that's a win in my book. Now put that thing out of its misery so we can get to the next task. Oh yeah, I've got another task for you after this. Alright, so 10 more seconds. We've actually got a timer on the top right of the screen to let us know when we hit it. And then we know when it's really weak or not. So, one more second. Alright, now it's very weak. Let's hit it right in the head. Apparently that was very weak. Maybe it's only its damage output that's weak. I don't know. But we appear to have crippled it, so that's good. And it definitely can't hit us up here on this roof. Don't you dare run away. We actually need to kill this thing for the objective. Darn it, hit the tree. Am I going to have to chase a bear? No, we're good. Excellent. And we've unlocked the explosive bait. Oh, joy. Word Everyone's favorite wise, item, right? That karma stuff can backfire on you if you're not careful. And take it from me. You don't want to use it on yourself. Unless, you know, you're really confident you can kill everything around you before it wears off. Okay, next we've got explosions. <laughs> the trappers would rig up bait with explosives to take on some of the more dangerous game out there. I want you to go make some explosive bait and don't blow your fingers off in the process. You're not a robot like me. No replacement hands for you. 
Cool, so that's one of the missions done, but we do need to go and make some explosive bait now. Now, explosive bait is kind of a controversial item inside Fallout 76. I won't say why, in case people don't know. But explosive bait is something which doesn't necessarily need to be in the game, in my opinion. And we could just kind of alter this little quest line in order to get rid of it. But the thing is... It's something that we need to do currently for this quest line. Now, one thing which I must say about Rose's quest line is that it is actually pretty long, all of Rose's stuff. So that's a bit unfortunate, really, because as much as I like Rose's stuff, it does drag on quite a bit. Like in this case, for example, we need to go all the way over here to the Sons of Dane compound, which is good for the sake of exploring. You know, we'll get map markers and stuff, but it's genuinely quite far away. Now, I believe you can just make it yourself at any Tinkerer bench, but I think you need frag mines and also special types of meat. So therefore, we've actually got to go and get them, which means hunting for them anyway. So we might as well just go to the place where the game tells us we can definitely find the things. You know what I mean? Also, before I forget, recently in these videos, I've been making it so that we actually kind of stop and listen to the conversations and stuff of people. Whereas in some of the first videos, I actually cut out a lot of the dialogue because, you know, the dialogue for the most part, a lot of the people who are watching this series probably know it, so therefore I just kind of skipped it for the sake of making the videos a little bit shorter, a little more digestible. But what do you guys think about that? Would you guys rather we actually sat through the conversations? And that's a lot of bloat flies right there. Okay, let's get out of here. No need to deal with them and those blood eagles over there. All right, we're still in danger, but let's see if we can grab ourselves a grenade. Just in case they group up in an enormous bunch like they did before. Let's try out this death tambo. Alright, shorter range than the machete, of course. But yeah, it's, it's one shot on these blowflies. Not bad, not bad. Oh, hello, mate. You decided to come to the back party as well. Oh, that's a missile right by my head. That was close. Alright, let's get out of here before that one missile launcher gets a lucky hit on me. See if we can sneak away. We're also right next to another base, which is absolutely lovely. <laughs> Great, we went from one pit of fire into another... Yep, they found me already. That makes no sense. How would you know? You weren't in that group. That was a Molotov that went right by my head. Okay, let's uh, get out of here, because there's a really mean doggo on me as well. Sorry, doggo. I love you really, doggo. No such thing as bad doggos. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We got away from that place. We're still in danger, technically, but by the look of it, they're not actually going to be pursuing. Excellent. Got another Blood Eagle camp over there. Oh, that's a mannequin. All right, we've got some rad toads over there. All right, um, should we see if we can deal with these? I mean, they're pretty far away, so we could probably kill it before it gets near enough to actually kill us. Wow, that, that rad toad is tough. Look at how much damage that did. Practically none. I mean, we're still getting sneak attacks on the thing, so that's pretty ace. If I can actually hit the thing. Get a grenade out there. See what we can do with that. Well, we technically hit it a little bit. There we are. And let's tambo it. Excellent. Job done. Okay. I love the rad toads. They're such a, a cool new enemy type. In fact, one thing that 76 did, I think far better than any other Fallout game, besides obviously being online and stuff like that, you know, no other game had online, but... The variety of new enemies they added to 76 is awesome. You know, a lot of the designs of the enemies themselves as well, extremely cool. You know, things like the Rad Toads and all the Cryptids, like the Sheep Squatch and the Grafton Monster and the Flatwoods Monster. All of those cool things. The Mothman, of course. We haven't seen the Mothman in this playthrough, I don't think. But all of those things... Oh dear. All of those things, absolutely awesome. So cool. We've got another base over here. Again, a Blood Eagle base. Hmm, maybe we should just go around this one. Hello there, people. What's going on over here? We've got some settlers over here. Okay, so we've got some nice people here, not doing any harm. Hello there, people. Some fusion cells. But also, you know, XP is important right now, so... XP is important. No one shall be spared. Oh, that was pretty bad, wasn't it? That was pretty bad indeed. He's got a metal right leg. What am I wearing on my right leg? Do I have a legendary on my right leg? I probably do, don't I? Uh, no, I just got studded leather. Level 10, that's doing 5 and 13. What's this metal one doing? Uh, 8 and 1. Absolutely not. I would rather stick with the studded leather. Thank you very much. 
It's really weird that some of them are just dramatically worse than leather, isn't it? I don't know. It's what it is. I'm happy that leather actually is good, because leather in real life is pretty good armor. You know what I mean? Okay, let's keep going. Hello. Who's out there? We got a raider. Oh, okay. Right in the head. Job done. Looking like he was looting this crash plane over here. Oh, we're also over encumbered. That's not good. Wonder what he's got on him. Let's take a look. Again, shotgun stuff. I mean, we need to find a better pump action shotgun, don't we? There's for Sons of Dane Compound. This is what we are after, this place here. This is obviously a place where you can do the event One Violent Night, which is a pretty popular event, actually. People use it for XP farming quite a lot. Lots of bad guys to kill. Pretty repeatable. Lasts a long time. It's a good XP farm, doing One Violent Night. But over here, we need to get the stuff to make the explosive bait. Now, as I said, I think you can just make it by getting the ingredients anywhere. I think you need, like, rat stag meat, uncooked, obviously, and frag mines? But I'm not certain. Ooh, a hot dog. Yes, please. Put that dog in my belly. Alright, so let's take a look around. It's in this little cooler here. Rad stag meat and frag mines, along with some... Yeah, it's all the ingredients, including glue and stuff like that. Well, that's nice. Also a super stim pack. Not many people have seen the super stim packs. They've got like a leather cuff on them. Pretty cool looking. Alright. Now that that's done, we can actually craft this at any tinkerer bench. It is pointing us in the direction of one over there. So we might as well use it, right? Might be able to clear out some ferals in the process and get some XP. This place is pretty much always ferals. But that obviously has a lot of variety of enemies. You know, you've got regular feral ghouls. You've got charred ferals, glowing ferals, glowing ones. You know, there, there's a lot of dangerous variety of feral depending on your level. For us in this case, though, we're probably just going to get basic normal ferals at level 19. Oh, there's a treasure miner up there. Hello, mate. Oh, that's not him. But I can definitely hear one. Let's hunt him down. Also, we keep getting over in combat. Let's have some grilled rad stag. So there's a feral on the roof. And there's the miner. Okay, well, let's uh, kill the reaver. Who aren't anywhere near... Get back here! Who aren't anywhere near as bad as they were in Fallout 3, thankfully. Oh, there he is. He's running back. And oh, see, I, I hate killing these guys because it feels like I'm bullying them. Uh-oh. Nade in there. Okay, he's still in there. I think he's cornered himself. Oh. So these guys, I believe, their role is to go and find legendaries for the purveyor, Murmur, so she can sell them. I think that's what their role is. Okay, he's dead. Dusty Mole Miner pale, pale and a Mutant Slayer's Robot Chess Piece. Well, that's really not a very good legendary effect. But I might be able to script it. Okay, let's go and use this bench to complete our objective. Create some explosive base. We go to explosive ammo. I presume it's there. No? Grenades it'll be. No! It's quest items, is it? I have no idea where it is. Okay. Ah, it's right there in mines. Okay. So yeah, it is just a piece of meat with a mine strapped to it. Absolutely genius, right? Let's go and make those right there. I can only make the one, but that's enough to complete the mission. Great. You've got yourself some gross meat-covered explosives. But now what? Well, use your imagination. The trapper sure did. Any hungry carnivore is sure to be drawn in by the smell of fresh meat. So this one time Chuck, he was the guy who came up with this crazy idea. He laid out explosive bait along the trail after a raid. Then, when the responders came looking for us with their tracking dogs, well, let's just say the hounds lost their scent. You know, because their heads were blown off. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I'm saying. I don't care what you use your bait on. Just use it to kill some things that would kill and eat you. Let me know how it works for you. Okay, so we're going to use the explosive bait on anything that could kill and eat us. And we happen to have an attack mongrel right here. So I guess we can try this now. Hopefully this uh, hopefully this works. Otherwise I've got to make some more, which will be very, very annoying. I mean, do I want to use it on the dog just in case for that reason? Because it looks like he had a collar on. He might not act the same way as regular animals do. Let's hunt around for a different type of carnivore. Also, be careful of this place over here. There's a... Automated machine gun turrets here. 
And a very nasty doggo. Hello, mate. But yeah, let, let's use this bait on a different animal, just in case. I've got a sn very sneaky suspicion that it might not work on those other ones. Hmm. We do have some chickens here. Do they count as deadly animals? I mean, I'd love to find out, but I don't think... I think that'll be a bit of a waste of the explosive bait, don't you? I mean, I'll kill them. Free XP and all that, you know? Let's not waste bullets on them, though. Don't be, don't be absurd. It's not Resident Evil 8. My God. Let's get some chicken thighs right there. Delicious. You know what? I know it's a waste of caps, but I'm just going to go straight over to where it's actually marked. Where I can go and do it. I can go right over there. So let's go and head to the Overseer camp and do it that way. So we're getting near Flatwoods now. We've got some of those Mr. Farm hands popping out. Easy XP right there. And hey, we got a level up. Brotherhood of Steel, welcome. Broadcast found. Level 20. Oh, you have no idea how important level 20 is, people. This is such a big deal. Okay, well, let's get somewhere a bit safe. And then we can talk about why level 20 is such a big deal for us. Well, oh, hello. Well, there's attack dogs. Let's go and use the bait on them. We'll talk about it in a moment, I promise. <laughs> there's the explosive bait. And there it blows up. Lovely, right? Let's hear it for brutal efficiency. <laughs> yeah. I guess the trappers didn't mind picking shrapnel out of their quarries. As cruel as the trappers were, the diehards were the exact opposite. Don't let their name fool you. We caught them that because their stubborn asses refused to give up their dignity and couldn't bear to commit unprovoked violence. <laughs> Pacifists. I don't know much about their special tactics. Did they have any? I don't know. Go find a death claw and make friends with it or something. So Rosa now told us to go approach a death claw and make friends with it. Now, that is something you can actually do. But uh, let's talk about level 20 first and why it's a big deal. Well, firstly, we can go and swap out that little revolver for our fixer. Because this is a level 20 fixer. We can use this now. Oh, this is such a nice upgrade now. If we actually go and look at the difference between this now. Because this fixer is doing 38 damage a shot, 45 ACP rounds. Not that much damage, I know. Not that much. This is doing 41, for example. But this, lots of bullets in the clip, rapid fire, and it already has an additional stealth benefit just by holding it. Improve stealth and faster movement when sneaking. So this is going to be our go-to gun for quite a while. Unfortunately, we can't make a new fixer. We only have this fixer. We don't have the fixer plan, unfortunately. We'd have to do encrypted and hope we get it for that reason. But also, this is a big deal because level 20 gets us a brand new perk that is vital to this run. So let's go and open up our perk card pack and see what we have got. Serendipity. We already maxed that out, I believe. EMT, hard bargain, sturdy frame. Give your kids memories they don't have to repress. That's, that's just a tip. That's not really a joke game, is it? Okay, so we're definitely going to go and uh, put a point into agility here. Because now in agility, we get sneak. Yes, people. 25% harder to detect while sneaking. We're going to quit this right now. And then we're going to try to get that up to rank 3 ASAP. Because if we get that up to rank 3... We're going to have a much, much easier time with this series. Trust me, it's going to be fantastic. Okay, but that is done now. So, I mean, we could equip, like, you know, Sturdy Frame and stuff if we want to. But then again, it's kind of a crutch card, you know. It's the same as Traveling Pharmacy. You know, it's like, yes, okay, it's useful. But it's also like, you shouldn't really rely on it, if that makes sense, you know. But there we go. We've now got our Fixer and we have also got our really, really cool Sneak Perk. And of course, this fixer, this is just like a base level fixer. You know, it could be better. You know, we can go and give it like a hardened receiver. We can go give it a longer barrel and stuff. It's already got a perforated magazine, which is really, really good. That perforated magazine actually allows us to have armor piercing to a degree. So there we go. Much better weapon. Massive upgrade at level 20. Huge success has been made. But go on then, we'll do the last quest where we've got to make friends with the Death Claw. I know you want to see it, so let's head to the top of the world and go do this. This is Commander Sofia Daguerre of the USSA. We've also this got the Commander's radio. USSA, come in. Please, come in. There was a malfunction upon re-entry. I repeat, we've crashed somewhere. Crew status 
Unknown. Broadcasting my coordinates. Dad, please hurry. So there's Commander Daguerre's radio, and Commander Daguerre is one of the allies, of course, and she's actually got a pretty compelling quest line. Uh, we probably actually could do some of those quest lines in this playthrough. There's Beckett's quest line, which involves killing a bunch of raiders, and there's Commander Daguerre ones, which involves doing lots of hunting uh, for robots and stuff like that. It, it's pretty cool overall, and it'll give us some good XP and a pretty decent ally overall. Right. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's head west to where we can find a Death Claw. Now, I am tempted. Hear me out, it sounds crazy. I am tempted to hit it with the Karma Dart Syringe. Because yes, I know it makes it more powerful. But if I can hit it with the Karma Dart Syringe, wait 30 seconds, then go and talk to it and make friends, then it might actually be safer in the long run. I mean, I could just not make friends with it. That's like an optional objective. You just need to kill a Death Claw, essentially. Oh, hello. Got a raider very nearby. There's one there. And there's one right there. That's the one I probably heard, isn't it? Oh. Oh, please learn to hit something, Render. So, yeah. Terrible accuracy right there on my part. But we killed him in three shots, which might not be as good as the revolver. But we'll have to see what happens if we get him with a VATS headshot, won't we? That'll be pretty good. We've got a bunch of ferals there. Oh, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. I am getting in on this, my friend. Let me just go and get a grenade right here. Plasma grenade. Throw that out there. XP for days, bro. Okay, we should kill two of the four. But hey, got some good XP right there. And let's carry on hunting this death claw. I mean, but there's freaking guys everywhere here. Go on then, let's bank up a crit. I hit him in the chest a couple times. Next one, we should be able to get with a headshot if he causes trouble. I mean, or we can just use that crit on the older uh, death claw, of course. If I remember correctly, the death claw is at the bottom of these cliffs. So we might have to drop down. We'll see. Okay, it's a little lower than where we are now. All right, let's be careful. Uh, I could jump into my power armor here, but hey, I've played Nuclear Winter. I know how to get down these cliffs without getting hurt. <laughs> you know, if you play Nuclear Winter a lot, you'll know how to navigate these cliffs without getting any injuries on you. All right, so over here, just at the bottom of these cliffs, there should be one death claw. Ah, there he is right there. It's a legendary death claw as well. Oh, isn't that just brilliant? Okay. Let's see if we can get down there there. Now it's a level 20 death claw. So we should get a decent legendary we can use since we are level 20. Hmm. Do I have any stealth boys, I wonder? If I have a stealth boy, that might be a really good thing to pop. I have a stealth boy. And blood eagles are trying to kill it. Okay, we need to kill this blood eagles before they kill my death claw. All right, so let's try this. Actually, no, let's use a rifle, use a rifle. There we go, shot right there. Do not kill my death claw. I need to make friends with him. I mean, this is making friends, right? Oh, that was scary. <laughs> and again, try to get him right in the head, hit him with a grenade. Miss. Miss again, my God. At least the Death Claw's doing a good job of killing them. So this is why I'll be useless in a... Oh, wow. We just one-shot that dude. This is why I'll be useless in a real war. Panic under pressure and all that. Wouldn't be able to save any of my friends. Okay. So that's good. Death Claw doesn't know we're here. So again. Let's hit him with the Karma Dart. Wait 30 seconds. Use a Stealth Boy. Make friends. And then run and kill him. All right? Let's go. One, two, three, four. 28, 29, 30. Okay, that's 30 seconds, so he's now weaker. Let's make friends. Make friends. I hit the button. I hit the button. Did that count? Try again. There we go. Definitely made friends with him that time. Cool. Do I have to kill him? Do I have to kill the claw? Optional, kill the claw or flee from it. Well, we'll try to kill it. But at least I know I can complete the objective, you know, by running away as well. All right, so where's he gone? Now, the belly is the weak point on the, uh, on the death claw. So let's see if we can hit the belly. I mean, I presume it also takes extra damage to the head as well. But the belly is a bigger target than the head. 
Oh dear, this is using a lot of bullets. Okay, oop, time to run. <laughs> okay, where's my old uh, machine gun here? Oh, recoil control going crazy. And a nade right there. Oh, this is like a little boss battle, isn't it? Friggin' Deathclaw. There's all my cryo grenades. Oh boy. Ooh, dear, 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 dear. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. I know Dark Souls. I know Dark Souls. This will be fine. All is fine. All is good. Run, 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 run. Okay, he's hit us with the rocks a couple times. He hasn't got us with his actual claw yet, though. And they're not called Death Rocks. They're called Death Claws. So it's the claws we've got to watch out for. Oop. Oh, that was a hit with a claw. Look at that. That was a cripple right there. Right, back off, back off. Oh, boy. They're staggering me every single hit. Oh man, could you imagine if this was the level 50? Friggin... Get out of my swamp! Heal up! Oh boy, that was close, oh boy! Shoot the gun! Shoot the gun! Oh my god! <laughs> she wouldn't reload the gun fast enough! And we got a new 10 mil for that. Well, we'll use it, I guess. Oh my god. <laughs> Take that, you beast. Hey, good on you for killing one of the nastiest creatures out there. I mean, you're fucking nuts for even trying it. But I like that about you. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> wow. Nicely done, everyone. It's probably a good time to teach you that not everyone can be your friend out there. That's the real takeaway from the diehards. Moving on, the Blackwater Bandits were known for being sneaky thieves. Let me tell you, they once hit a Brotherhood of Steel camp. <laughs> Insane, right? They snuck right past the guards and stole guns, ammo, mini nukes, you name it. Right out from under the poor bastards while the rest of them slept. Next thing you know, the knights moved on out with their tails between their legs, and we had a new arsenal. Well, the Brotherhood's gone, but we still have heavily armed super mutants. Go steal from them, sneak around. Maybe you won't have to fight them all. But really, all I care about is their gun stash. Might be a good haul, might not. There's only one way to find out. Right, so we made friends with the Death Claw. That's pretty good. That's pretty all fine and dandy, isn't it? But we do have ourselves a mole miner there. So I think we should try to get this guy, get him killed, and then end the video there. That was a pretty insane fight with that Death Claw. I am not going to lie. We used a lot of bullets, that's for sure. There you go, hit him with the old 10 mil. The new one we just picked up, which is a Mutants with that's Critical Damage. So not a very good 10 mil at all, but... It is a 10 mil. Could you stop that? We might actually need to... I can't believe I'm going to save this. Buy ammo. We generally might need to do that. I mean, we might be able to craft some. I don't know how we're doing for resources and stuff. Get back here, you sausage. Look at him moonwalking. Would you go away, you silly rat? He's only interested in the moles, son. There we are. And what's he got? He's got a two-shot... <laughs> He's got a two-shot pipe bolt action. Ah, oh, what a rubbish gun to get. Yeah, two-shot pipe. See, it's not terrible, I suppose. I mean, it's technically doing a bit more damage than my hunting rifle, but, you know, is that really what you want with two-shot? You don't really want a single-shot gun with two-shot, really, do you? You want, like, an automatic one. But, hey, there we go. There is a gun. So, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm going to go and uh, put my old survival tent down so we can throw some of those legendaries into our stash and stuff. It's been a cool video. You know, we got a lot done. You know, like we've done some quests for Rose. We leveled up to level 20. That is such a big deal. I can't stress enough how big of a deal that is. With that done, it means that we have got our fixer, which we are probably going to use for the longest time, especially when we upgrade it with some new mods to make it do even more damage than it's currently doing. That'll be a really nice thing to get modded up. In fact, we might do that at the start of the next video. And then after that, we have got to go steal from a super mutant camp, do some more stuff for Rose, and then we get lots of XP in the meantime. But until then, I've been the final render, and you've been the audience. Until next time, farewell. Bye bye gang. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.
thank you to all of our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Special thank you to our Level 3 YouTube members, which currently consists of Psycho Girl, Katrina McKenna, and Raven's Roost. Mm -hmm.